Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. We are on to another adventure today, and I think that it will be just that, an adventure. I have no idea how this is going to go, but I have great ideas, and that's the most important thing. So I have a new inspiration for my work today, continuing on this um, year's worth of curiosity. Uh, a couple things before uh, we dive into that is that today when you see this video will be the last day that the doors are open to the membership. And um, I hope that you have had a chance over the last week and you will have one more, like I will shut the doors on Monday. But if you haven't had a chance to peek in and see the free preview, you can still do that 24 hours and um, get a chance to look at that and look at last week's projects, the book of Curi Courage and Curiosity. I did the first video on YouTube and here for Sunday Inspiration. And then I did the four other four other projects, I think it's four other projects, um, within the membership during the free preview week. And that will still be available as of you seeing this depending on when you see it, for 24 hours until Monday. So, okay. What else do I have to tell you? I don't think there's anything else. All right, so let's take a look at what I, what crazy ideas I have happening over here. Okay, so this is uh, my inspiration, and I'm going to be using a couple of these um, from, these. this is from Uppercase. Um, and they have a wonderful magazine. It's f f inspiration filled constantly, just a feast for the eyes always. And um, they put out these encyclopedias of different topics and I love them. They're so good. They're just inspiration overload. <clears throat> but this one's, <clears throat> excuse me, this one's called the printmaker. And I love um, font and numbers and different things. I love that. And so, of course, I, I'm like, yes, please. But what I loved about this was, <clears throat> this was a lot about the process of printmaking and the, the versatility and the different styles and all the different types of printmakers that sh they featured in the magazine or in the book, encyclopedia. So, um, but I just positively love it. I love the way a print press looks. I love that kind of scratchy feel. I love how um, a lot of times the printing, you overlap the different layers. So you put down one color and then you put down another color and then you put down another color. And it got me to thinking. So um, let me... So, and a lot of the printing press, printing process has to do a lot with um, fonts and different things like that and being able to kind of, you layer the colors. And so um, I just am thoroughly inspired and I just love that kind of, it's almost grungy look of the, the press. And so, and the font and the press and the font. But let me go to, here's some, obviously you can tell what I like. Uh, let me get to this page here another one but like you've got all these different layers and they're all different parts to the puzzle so they do print the dark color or the light color first and then another color and then the dark color so they layer the colors so then um let's see did i miss one no okay so let's go to this tab here and then you can see here how they they, they layer like the leaves and then they do the apples over the top or they do the base of the tree and then they do the design inside. Now I can't, I'm not going to, and a lot of these are carved and that kind of thing. I'm not going to do that. But it gave me an idea of being able to layer over pattern. So putting one pattern down and another pattern over it, depending, you know, it could be anything really. Um, and so, and plus the letters, the like the fonts, I just like ah, love that. And I love how you know it's got like lights and dark parts where it, maybe it didn't print all the press didn't print all the way down. It's just so so good. It's, it's very organic. 
Okay, so what was this one? Oh, more, more letters. I, I'm obsessed. And let's see, what, what did I highlight back here? This was just, oh, this is a great example. So how, how when you press it, there's lighter parts and darker parts. And a lot of times this can look like a stencil, but really what this to me looks like that I can do, because you can see these are all carved um, stamps. And I have done that, I just don't have the patience for it. For how for the time that I would use them over and over again, I just wouldn't, I'll, I go to my stencils. So, but I thought I could use my stencils with my gel plate and get something similar. And then I thought, well, why couldn't I layer colors with my, with my, you know, have a pattern, layer the colors using my gel plate and tissue paper? And then why couldn't I add a, a font to that as well? So I have been inspired by several different things from this book. It's just, there's just so much in, inspiration. Like, I just, wait, let me go back to this one. So see how this just, it feels rough. It's been printed. It's, I, I love that look. And that, to me, I can get somewhat, not exactly, of course. Um, I can't do the art of printing press. It's a, it's an amazing, beautiful art with a lot of skill and time involved. So what I'm going to do is create something similar in my mind um, like that. So what I have done here so far, I have a 12 by 12 MDF board out and I put some just neutral papers, scraps that were on my desk. They don't have any specific meaning except I like them and they were different colors. I made sure I used matte gel and put them down so that they were nice and flat. And then I came back with my Utrecht gesso because it's a little bit thicker and used my my uh, palette knife and really scraped this out nice and smooth. But it gives me some, some variety in the background. It's light enough that the papers are showing through and yet I'm still getting that striation uh, from my palette knife, except it's not my typical texture. It's very, very smooth. I went over it several times to get it as smooth as possible. Now there's still going to be texture, but it's limited. And so I wanted that because I want to do a lot of printing on my gel plate with tissue paper and put that down and layer over it um, in my mind, that's how I have it, and then come back and add any additional color or final marks or shading or anything like that. So I have a plan to kind of break this up into sections because just like the printmaker, these were bold graphics and I really like that. I like that combination. And I have a quote that I will be, I'm going to be using all of my font stencils that I have. I think that I have, I might have a few more, but I chose the ones that I thought might work well on my gel plate and um, I'll have these listed you know me and the names of my stencils um, block big bold block font old type text um, grunge font and straight block font I, I believe and then I have also out here for my stencils I have two stencils the little flowers baby's breath and little flower status and then I also have out here, and this, this, these might change as I get going, but um, I have my uh, five by eight stencil. This is the sim. This is um, what is this one? Hmm. Good question. Moroccan tile, <laughs> and this is also this is Spanish tile. So I have these two. These are kind of I'm. I want to be able to overlay some of this pattern. So thought process is. I want my quote up here, big, bold, like using my fonts, but I'm going to print out all my fonts on tissue paper, just as they are, cut out my letters and put them together so that they feel handcrafted, like I'm going to spell out my whole quote, and my quote's pretty big, so it'll take me a bit of time to kind of put it together, but I want to do that on tissue paper. Everything is on tissue paper, the first layers. Then in the middle section, I want to do some flowers. I will be doing just, you know, parts of the flowers, 
that kind of thing. But I can do print after print after print of these on my gel plate in different colors and see which ones work. And if I can overlay them with certain colors, we will see. Uh, uh, this is all a big giant experiment. And, um, and then I have these ones down here because I want some pattern. So I'll have pattern, flowers, quote. And I will blend them together and hopefully I will overlap some of them. Um, maybe my flowers will be the overlapping factor. Not exactly sure how I put it all together yet. But this is my giant experiment. And the reason I chose flowers is because like wildflowers, you must allow yourself to grow in all the places people thought you never would. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Okay, so I have a stack of tissue paper and I'm sure I will need more than this. I have my gel plate. I have my brayer. I have my palette, my prepped surface. I have a variety of colors in a variety of types of paints. I chose the colors. I always say that. Choose the colors that works for you. I don't really know how the colors will overlay, if they even will, what it will look like. Will it disappear? I don't know. So I have colors that I thought would work together that might be, some might be more vibrant, so that might be a bottom color versus a top color, that kind of thing. Um, I also have some raw umber out here, and this is a um, Liquitex acrylic gouache raw umber. It's a softer version of umber than I typically use, and I probably will use, I probably won't use, well, I might. I might for like aging, and we'll see. We'll see. Um, I have some teal, some raw sienna. Raw sienna I thought would be a great kind of neutral color. I do have, um, no, I have, I'm going to use this rose matter because I think it's a little bolder. And then I have some yellow. I also have a softer version. I have Naples yellow. And then um, I have some prism violet. And then I will, instead of using um, black gesso for my black, I'm going to use a matte black paint from Blick. It's a little bit thinner and works, I think, a little bit better on my gel plate. We'll see. All of this is, you know, subject to change once you get going, because some paints work better on the gel plate than others. And so if a color isn't working well, I will switch. The reason I like gouache is because it's typically opaque and it will give me a stronger, bolder, um, hopefully, print. So um, those are the colors that I know right now. And then once I get all of my printing done and I kind of put it, like start putting it together, I'll be using fluid matte medium with my tissue paper. And the reason I chose this nice and flat and nice and white without anything else on it is because once I start putting that tissue paper down on this nice white background, it will virtually disappear. And I, you won't see that it, there's little pieces of tissue paper. Then I will come back with color over the top. Maybe it's a wash of teal or a wash of something, raw umber, whatever it might be. And I might, I was thinking that I might use acrylic inks for that um, because it's they're transparent and I can get some areas darker and some areas lighter so that I don't wash out the patterns and things that I've done. So I, it might sound like a little crazy idea. That's okay. This is the place to do it. That is all I know right now. Okay, so if that is one big giant experiment and I can't wait. I'm so excited to try this idea. And typically I do these kinds of things in my journal. But this year, because I'm exploring everything, I'm not leaving anything out and saying, no, that's a dumb idea. I'm going for it because that's the only way we learn. And typically I do this behind the scenes, but I want you to see that this is how it works. This is how I get ideas for a Sunday. This is how I get ideas for work, for a commission, for whatever it might be. 
And there is no dumb question to, to ask ourselves, like, what, like, why should I do this? Um, this won't work. This isn't a good idea. Those are all silly because how else will we learn? How else will we grow? How else will we imagine a different way to create? And this is how we grow. And as I was thinking about growing and all that, I had had this quote on my desk for a long time because I loved it. And I'm like, I'm waiting for the perfect time to use it. And today is the day. Because like wildflowers, you must allow yourself to grow in all the places that people thought you never would. So a lot of people will say to me, that's a silly idea. Well, sure it is, but I'm going to try it. Or a lot of people might say to you, you could never do that. You're not smart enough to do that. You're not talented enough to do that. You don't have the skills to do that. You have to grow in the places that people never thought you would. And how do you do that? You do it. You take action. You do something silly. You dream bigger than you ever thought you would dream. That's how you do it. You show up and you do the thing, whatever the thing is. It doesn't even have to apply to art. It can be work. It can be your physical condition. It can be a relationship. It can be anything. Grow in the places that people doubt you. Um, and let them doubt you. Let them say you can't do it. And prove them wrong. It happens to me all the time. All the time I get comments about... Your artwork is different. You're doing things differently now. You're, and I'm like, yes, I am. Why wouldn't we? We should be different people than we were a year ago in all the right ways. We should have learned something new. We should have figured something out about ourselves. We should have said the words that we needed to say. We should have taken the job that we wanted all along. We should have taken the risk, whatever it might be. Yes, we are growing and learning, and we are growing in the places that everyone said that we couldn't. And that is why I'm doing this now for you, to show you that no idea is a crazy idea. Try it. If it doesn't work, so what? If this doesn't work, I know I'm going to have some great gel prints. And if this doesn't work, it will teach me something. And that's part of that growing in the places that we didn't think we could. We have to take a risk. We have to be willing to fail. And I don't like to say fail because it's not a failure. We have to be willing to suck at it. And then we learn. And then maybe if I didn't like how this turned out, I think, well, maybe I will try something different. Maybe I'll move this around. Maybe I'll do this first. And then, aha, uh -huh, you've got a masterpiece or your style or your voice or whatever it might be. Same with anything in life. You say, that didn't work out so well. I'm going to do this differently the next time. I'm going to do this first the next time right? So don't let anybody tell you that you are not in the place that you sh shouldn't be, that you're asking the wrong questions, or that you're growing too fast, or that you're not. Don't let them tell you you're different. Hopefully you're different in all the right ways, and you say, thank you. I am. And that's what I want to remind you today. Be curious. Take the risk. Grow in the places that everyone says you can't. And you will be surprised at what happens within you. All right, my loves. I'm going to attempt this giant adventure. And I hope you enjoy the project. I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. <laughs>